What's up, movie crew? Welcome to the latest Let's Rank. Before I get started, if you are new to this channel, my name is Luke, this is Let's Watch a Movie, and if you're in anything cinema and physical media related, you've come to the right place, so hit that subscribe button. Today, I thought with the latest entry of the Conjuring Universe coming out with the Nun 2, review will be up on Friday, by the way, I thought I would do a ranking of the Conjuring franchise. This is a franchise with eight movies. Some are really good. Some, the fewer things said, the better. So without further ado, let's get started. At number eight, and it hurts actually to say this one, but we've got The Nun. All right. Yeah, it's a little weird to say that this one is the worst one, given that I'm planning to see the sequel this week, along with quite a few other people. However, this one feels very out of place, and I feel like the personal hype that I had for it just ultimately made it fall short of expectations. So, for starters, you cast the main actress in the Conjuring universe. You cast her younger sister in the same universe. But there's no relation between these two people that you clearly know are sisters in real life. That's the first mistake. The second one. I thought Valak was flipping creepy. I'm not far enough into this video to drop F-bombs yet. In The Conjuring 2, which is very high up on this list, by the way. And... This movie fell short on that. And another thing for me personally that upset me was one of the things that had me very hyped for this movie was that it was directed by Corin Hardy, who did a movie a few years prior to this called The Hallow. And The Hallow is really good. I highly recommend anyone to check that movie out, because The Nun is not completely his fault. Some of it is, but part of it is the fact that this movie just doesn't feel like the rest of the movies in the Conjuring universe. It just feels like more of a monster horror film than a supernatural horror film. On top of all that, the story itself is just not, eh, it's not great. At number seven, we've got Annabelle. Like everyone else, when I saw the first Conjuring movie, I was like, Annabelle is creepy. And then James Wan mentions that we're going to probably get an Annabelle movie before we get Conjuring 2. And everyone was like, yes! And this movie just does not do that great of a job. And there's a lot of scenes where it feels like they're just padding out the runtime. Like... I know I complain about runtimes a lot, but this movie felt like had they took out the stuff where they were clearly padding out the runtime, this movie would have probably been an hour long. On top of that, where I can't completely blame the director for The Nun, this one was made by the guy who did Mortal Kombat Annihilation. I don't know what the decision-making process was that said, hey, he made Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Let's bring him in to direct Annabelle. No. Nah. Overall, the movie was not really all that scary. 
And I've got to say kudos to James Wan when Annabelle 2 was announced because he got asked a lot. Hey, Annabelle sucked. Why should we care about Annabelle 2? And he was very careful with his words, but he gave good reasons as to why he felt like everyone should still check out Annabelle 2, which later became Annabelle Creation. But as for Annabelle itself, uh, this one just was not that good. At number six, we've got The Curse of La Drona. And apologies if I butchered that title. Now, I do want to say, as a horror film, this is a really good horror film. It scared me, it had good scenes in it, it still told a good story, but as far as being in the Conjuring universe goes, this one is the least connected. So much so that even James Wan has had mixed feelings sometimes in interviews connecting this one or saying that it's connected to the main Conjuring universe. There's only one scene in there that really gives proof that it is connected. So while it is a good movie, this one's not one you're probably going to see The Nun 2 or the eventual Conjuring 4 that I've heard possibly happening. This one's not going to get brought up again. But overall, it is still a good movie. It is definitely better than The Nun and Annabelle. The next two movies on this list, it's probably on par with those, but given that this is part of the Conjuring universe, given that this is the least connected movie in this universe, I feel like this one can't really be ranked that high up. We have entered the top Five of the Conjuring Universe. And at number five, we've got The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It. All right, so number five and number four could almost be interchangeable, but I did rewatch these recently, and I will further explain why with the next one, why this one is ranked lower. But part of the thing that I think ultimately hurts The Conjuring 3 is that at this time, James Wan had just finished on Aquaman. DC was wanting him to like fast track the eventual Aquaman sequel. And he had already started working on what ended up becoming Malignant. So not having James Wan behind the camera for this movie, I think ultimately hurt the movie. It also has a really lengthy runtime compared to some of the other movies in this franchise. And one of the things I've enjoyed with the main Conjuring movies is that when it goes to the stories of Ed and Lorraine Warren, James Wan had been picking the more obscure stories that have happened. Like he's already told us, don't expect Amityville in here. And this one is more one of the more well-known stories. And given this isn't the first time it's been told, I feel like it kind of hurts the movie. It's not a bad movie by any means, but I can't really put it up there with some of the other ones. I will say it is on par with what I'm about to show off as number four, and I'm gonna go into a little more details on why number four edges this one out. All 
All right, we have entered the top half of the Conjuring franchise. All right, as I mentioned with Conjuring 3, this movie and Conjuring 3 are kind of interchangeable for me as far as rankings go, but I am giving this one the upper hand, and at number four, Annabelle Comes Home. Now, I mentioned with part of it is the main Conjuring movies had James Wan behind the camera, three did not. And I definitely think that did hurt three. But one of the things I have to say I enjoyed with Annabelle Comes Home is that there was a little bit of a gap before we eventually got Conjuring 3. I know part of it was because the world was shut down. But at the same time, Annabelle Comes Home feels like more of a sequel to Conjuring 2. And it's the final one of the three of the Annabelle trilogy. So this one wrapped up, well, had to be like the conclusion to Annabelle, but also built up to Conjuring 3. And it even feels like it's part of the main Conjuring story. Like you almost need to watch one, two, this, then three, if you're not necessarily a fan of watching Ladrona or the other Annabelle movies, this one is still worth watching. And it's definitely, this and Conjuring 3 are still on par with one another as far as like the story, but the fact that this one feels like a main movie and they got Patrick and Vera in this one kind of made it a little more special for me. All right, we have entered number three. Now, I have seen multiple Conjuring ranking videos over the years. And I know with some people, this one's going to be a little bit of a hot take. But it is what it is. And number three, the original Conjuring movie. All right, around this time, this was when James Wan was doing this. He was helping his longtime production partner, Lee Wannell, Wannell, do what ultimately ended up becoming Insidious. And at the same time, James Wan was wanting to try to do something outside of horror. And I think this was also around the time that he ultimately ended up getting chosen to direct Furious 7. But before that, we got this. And one of the reasons this was different from some of his other horror films is that this one was definitely more in the supernatural territory compared to previous movies. And at a time when we're getting stuff like The Purge and we're getting revivals with slashers and we're getting found footage films, this felt fresh at the time. I remember thinking, like, out of all the horror films that had come out, like, at this time, I was mainly watching indie horror films because a lot of the major motion people were not doing good horror films. This and The Purge, I think, were it for me. So this felt fresh. It felt unique. And as we found out later on, this movie kickstarted a new shared universe in cinema and something that we're still talking about now a decade later. The runner-up in the Conjuring universe. Annabelle C Creation. Sorry, I know I was about to say Annabelle comes home on that. All right, this movie had a lot to live up to. The Conjuring 2 
was great and did big numbers for a horror film in theaters. But on the flip side, the first Annabelle movie kind of sucks. And to top it off, James Wan put a lot of hope and confidence in Lights Out director David Sandberg. For those that don't know, after that, he went on to direct the Shazam movies. And on top of having just come off of Lights Out, Sandberg had to do some a lot of magic here because we had a nice little gap between Conjuring and Conjuring 2 and again Annabelle went good. So instead of following up what happens in Annabelle we go back and we find out what happens with Annabelle. We find out the origin we go back in time a little bit, so we've got a different setting. We've got something that still has that supernatural element that was in the previous movies. And on top of that, it tells a good story about these orphans and trying to have a place to live, and someone is just trying to fit in. On top of all that, it's a horror film involving an evil doll. And it just did everything really good. The jump scares were great. There were scenes that built up to really good tension spots. And there were even parts where you think you're going to get something and your expectations get subverted in a good way. Out of a lot of the movies, this one's probably the one I've actually watched the most just from... The runtime being a little bit different to, to the other ones. And it just has a good spot in its timeline in the Conjuring universe. James Wan said in an interview that Annabelle 2, which later became Annabelle Creation, to Annabelle would be the same as Godfather 2 to The Godfather. Yes, a lot of people like The Godfather, but Godfather 2 is a cinematic classic. Now, by no means am I saying that Annabelle Creation is a classic in this particular lineup, but it definitely improved thoughts on the potential spinoffs in the Conjuring universe. And it helped build up hype for what we eventually got with Annabelle Comes Home. So, that's why the silver medal goes to Annabelle Creation. Number one, and given I've talked about this a couple of times in here already, you should not be surprised, but number one is The Conjuring 2. This is the one that introduces the Valak character, the Crooked Man. We've got some children in a home that are being plagued by evil spirits, and it's even to the point where it is confusing Ed and Lorraine Warren as well. But on top of all the scares in this movie and all the tension you get throughout the movie, this also had a very good family story that was running parallel. So on one end, you have Ed and Lorraine that are not spending enough time with their child because this particular family's in the UK. And Ed and Lorraine are over there without their daughter. And on the flip side, you've got a single mom with, I believe it's four kids. So you've got these two family stories running parallel with one another while also still trying to scare the shit out of you. Normally, I would complain about lengthy runtimes, especially with horror films that usually tend to tell their story in an hour and a half to an hour and 40 minutes. This movie is two hours and 20 minutes, and it makes you feel the tension throughout the entire movie. 
everything about this one makes it the best of the Conjuring universe. It's got some of the best acting. It's got some of the best story work. It shows that James Wan, despite having just come off of Furious 7, the highest grossing movie in an action blockbuster franchise, can still manage to take risks and change things up in previously made horror films and doing different stuff while still keeping the overall supernatural subgenre to this one. So, I cannot stress this enough. The Conjuring 2 is easily my favorite movie in the Conjuring universe. And that is my ranking for the Conjuring universe. Probably in the next few days, I will try to remember to go onto Letterboxd and I will update my Conjuring ranking to include The Nun 2. For those unaware, James Wan's Atomic Monster has recently merged with Blumhouse, so when we're getting other Conjuring movies is currently up in the air. But I am going to make one bold statement now. I am going to say that with all of these newer shared universes over a main franchise and an like occasional spinoff sort of thing, I'm going to say in the era of the shared universes, I personally would rank the Conjuring franchise or the Conjuring universe as the number two shared universe to the MCU. Want to argue with me on it? Post it down in the comments. And I also know I had a couple of hot takes with my rankings. So if you disagree with mine, comment down below what is your personal ranking of the Conjuring universe. And as always, if you are new to this channel, hit that subscribe button, you like what you see, Leave a thumbs up. Comment down below. How would you rank the Conjuring universe? What is your number one? I think most of you are going to agree with me that number eight is The Nun. And I'm still going to see The Nun too. But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you all for watching and tune in next time.